everyone has heard of Pablo Escobar and El Chapo, but these female drug dealers were equally ruthless. Welcome to Mr. Beat, and today we're looking at the most infamous female narcos, ranging from assassins to money launders to cartel bosses. Our countdown of the most ruthless female narcos includes Griselda Blanco, Melissa Margarita Calderon Ojeda, Luz Irene Fajardo Campos, and more. Griselda Blanco. Some called her the Cocaine Godmother. Others dubbed her the Black Widow, a title attributed to the deaths of her three husbands. The name Griselda alone was enough to intimate anyone, which allegedly included Pablo Escobar. Before she was even a teenager, Blanco was linked to kidnapping and murder. Blanco only got more blood on her hands as she became a leading figure in the Miami drug war. It'd take the authorities nearly a decade to arrest Blanco. While Blanco could have been responsible for over 200 deaths, most of them didn't factor into the charges against her. Released and deported in 2004 due to health issues, Blanco survived another eight years before she was gunned down by a motorcyclist, a move from her own playbook, Sebastiana Coton Vasquez. Growing up in Guatemala near the border of Mexico, Caton Vasquez was abducted and forced into marriage by the time she was 18. After her cruel husband left, she provided for her five children by selling illegal goods. Cotton Vasquez's second husband was Juan Alberto Ortiz Lopez, a drug lord whom she inherited the business from, gaining ties to Sinaloa cartel leader Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. Coton Vasquez became known for her violent tendencies and taking on a hands-on role in trafficking. The former peasant reportedly moved 40 tons of cocaine between Central America and North America before being captured in 2014. Cotton Vasquez regained her freedom by supplying testimony that would put away fellow narcos, supposedly returning to her hometown of Malacatan. Sandra Avila Beltran Queenpin is a term that can be applied to many women, but there's only one queen of the Pacific. Where Griselda Blanco and Sebastiana Coton Vasquez essentially came, from nothing, Sandra Avila Beltran was born into the drug world. She shares family ties with Rafael Caro Quintero and Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, co-founders of the Guadalajara Cartel. Don't call her a nepo narco, though. This drug lord ascended to the top of the cartel world, commanding ships that smuggled tons of cocaine between Mexico's Pacific coast and North America, hence the queen of the Pacific title. After being arrested in 2007 and extradited to the U.S., five years later, Avila Beltran was released in 2015. She currently resides in Guadalajara, a free woman, Enadina Arellano Felix is another drug queen pin who has kept it in the family. Along with her six brothers, Felix became synonymous with the Tijuana cartel. Initially, money laundering and finances were Felix's areas of expertise. After her brother Eduardo was arrested in 2008, Enadina stepped up as the organization's head. Enadina's tactics might be more business-oriented than her brother's, who were more prone to violence. Of course, nobody becomes the leader of a cartel without being ruthless. As journalist Javier Valdez said, the women who rise high in it are very rare. They have to be extremely intelligent, talented, and brave. Enedina Arellano Felix is a prime example, making connections with other prominent traffickers while keeping the authorities at a distance. Where Enedina Arellano Felix has taken a fairly peaceful approach, Melissa Calderon is as violent as they come. By the time she was in her twenties, this Mexican native had joined the Sinaloa cartel, eventually becoming the head of its subdivision, the Damaso cartel. Following the death of her boyfriend, Calderon lost this position to Sergio Villarreal Barragan, a.k.a. El Grande. Unwilling to take this lying down, Calderon teamed with another boyfriend, Hector Pedro Camarena Gomez. Adopting the names La China and El Chino, the couple commanded an army of killers known as Las Fuerzas Especiales de los Damaso. 
more than 150 deaths have been traced to Calderon, who led an estimated 300 Sicarios before her capture in 2015 and subsequent incarceration. Earning the alias Doña Dina, Vale came from a notorious drug trafficking family. Every month, they transported cocaine said to be worth tens of thousands. Locals feared Vale's brothers, who were known for capturing and assaulting women. Vale herself was every bit as callous, believing anyone who knew too much about her family should be killed. At the same time, Vale and her family commanded respect throughout their community. In exchange, Vale supplied security and jobs with limitless wealth at her disposal. After Vale was arrested while visiting Miami in 2014, her brothers unsuccessfully plotted to assassinate the president of Honduras for failing to protect them. Vale ultimately pleaded guilty to drug tracking, although she'd serve a little over half of her ten-year sentence. Maria Guadalupe Lopez Esquivel This cartel boss gained a reputation for being as alluring as she was lethal. Esquivel joined the New Generation Cartel in 2017 upon entering a romantic relationship with fellow member Miguel L.M. II Fernandez. It didn't take long for Esquivel to climb up the chain of command, becoming much more than an assassin. She was practically a soldier, leading charges against the police, military, and National Guard. Esquivel became known as La Catrina, a name linked to the Day of the Dead. Although this spoke to Esquivel's merciless methods, it also foretold her fate. In January 2020, Esquivel was hit in the neck during a shootout. A helicopter arrived to escort her out of the area, but the 21-year-old died shortly after liftoff. Marixa and Mera Lemus. It's not uncommon for drug traffickers to have government connections. The Lemus sisters had especially close ties, their brother Magno being mayor of Moyuta. After a heart attack claimed his life in 2009, Mera stepped in to finish his term. Feared by the community, rumors circled that Mera murdered her husband, among others. Mera aspired to remain in office, organizing a campaign in 2011. That same year, Mera and seven others were gunned down in the massacre at Los Cuernos. Marixa attempted to run in her sister's place, only to lose. Not long after, Marixa was brought in on kidnapping and murder charges, receiving a 94-year sentence. Keeping her locked up has proven easier said than done, as Marixa successfully escaped twice before being apprehended. Luz Irene Fajardo Campos Born in the Mexican city of Cosala, Fajardo Campos initially had aspirations to be a lawyer. Her career went in a slightly different direction. With drug trafficking being rampant in her hometown, Fajardo Campos was no stranger to this world. Yet, she rose higher than anyone could have anticipated, leading a narcotics organization alongside her grown children and forming connections with the Sinaloa cartel. Living up to her title of La Comadre, Fajardo Campos oversaw aircraft that transported substances between borders. Her reign ended in 2017, after she was arrested at a Bogota airport with her two sons being murdered around the same time. In addition to paying $18 million, Fajardo Campos was sentenced to 22 years, in prison with another five years of supervised release. Jocelyn Alejandra this assassin rose to notoriety in January 2015 when an image of her sporting a large firearm was shared online. The post connected her to the Gulf Cartel, who reportedly gave her the nickname La Flaca, or the Skinny One. The name is also connected to Our Lady of Holy Death. Both descriptions are accurate, with Nino proving deadlier than she looked. As the image went viral, users analyzed the backdrop which didn't exactly paint the picture of luxury that people associate with high-ranking cartel members. Whether or not this is where Nino lived, her moment in the spotlight didn't last long. A few months after the image surfaced, what was left of Nino was found in an ice cooler at a Matamoros parking lot. Can you think of any other dope females? Let me know in the comments.